everyone. Welcome back to Cybersecurity Standup. I am your host, Bronwyn Hudson, and I'm the social media manager here at Uptix. And at uh, the Uptix booth right now at Black Hat 2023, I'm joined by Joel, who I'm extremely excited to be meeting in person. Um, welcome to the booth. How's your Black Hat going so far? It's amazing. It's so much fun. And it, it's, it's great seeing people who I've been talking to for a long time or people I've known for years. And, uh, you know, we, we coordinated the, the glasses very, very much on purpose. Check the yellow. Um, so is this your, this isn't your first blackout. You're a total veteran, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is many, 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 many. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. <laughs> so I'm going to start off by saying it's August, right? We're over halfway through the year. Here we are at Black Hat. What are some trends that you are noticing that you love? Ones that you hate? Thoughts on the whole experience? So I'm a message therapist. This is not a typo. Um, but I used to do the technical thing. So I'm kind of like that bridge between the creative and the technical. Uh, call myself a nerd that talks good. And really what I'm noticing is, and I don't want to call anybody out specifically, not a lot of companies trying um, to explain what they do with their messaging. They're all really defaulting on the technology, which is cool. We should be proud of the stuff that we build. But I think you know, I'm not seeing a lot of focusing on like the value statements and the value stories. Um, and so I'd like to see a little bit, little bit more of that. You know, we've, we've halfway through the year, but you know, there's, there's still time to pivot that messaging. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so tell us a little bit about your career. Like, how did you become a nerd that wants to talk good? Like, tell us about how you got to where you are. So my background is in theater education and video games. And then I accidentally in the 90s became an IT guy through the help desk. I did systems engineering, knock, sock, policy compliance. And then I was, I was a hardcore nerd. And then I applied to the government and they looked at my background. You used to work for Nickelodeon and video games. And they said communications. Ah. So I, I became the, the principal cybersecurity communications uh, manager at the Department of Homeland Security, okay. coordinating all these big programs and you know trying to boil it up to what is the essence or doing the, the lateral communication and alignment across the components and writing the change your password as frequently as you change your underwear emails. Um, Catchy. So, so I learned an awful lot, had an opportunity to join a startup, which is a whole nother story we'll have over a drink sometime. Um, and then I ended up in marketing. So my primary customers, my clients were cyber companies, startups, the intelligence community. Um, and I've worked with some phenomenal clients. I can see like several clients that I used to work with. Um, but now, but now I'm on my own. So I'm doing my own thing because I realized that one of the challenges with technical communicators is they go too deep, too fast, like I said, on the tech. And then when they go to a marketing agency, they're like, tell us what our story is. And the marketing agencies are phenomenal for execution, yep. but you've got to do a little bit of message therapy, right? Before you spend that money and, and do that investment. So I've, I've kind of positioned myself as a pre-marketing consultant slash coach. Okay. And it's, it's been wild how everybody is like, yeah, we need that. So like I said, I'm a nerd that talks good and I help other nerds talk gooder. I love it. Um, I've had a couple of conversations with folks about how we can encourage people of diverse backgrounds to get into this industry. And as someone who's kind of been through a bunch of different sort of angles of your career, do you have any tips or suggestions for folks who are looking to do that? I definitely think one of the challenges with technology is people who are from communities that aren't, don't often have the opportunity or they're not exposed to some of these things see that as a barrier, right? So if they don't have the access to technology early, they, they don't think they can get into it. And I think that's a failure on our part as technologists that again, I mean, it does come down to storytelling and messaging. We don't, we don't demonstrate and show like enough of the diversity. We're doing a much better job and it's really great to see some of these companies coming up and they're, they're different types of companies. Um, but in the end, you know, those job requirements are written very bland. It's not enticing. And a lot of people are like, you know, I, you know, maybe I'll just, I'll do sports or I'll do YouTube or, you know, I'll go into a trade and they don't realize that, it, that, that technology is accessible to everybody. So, you know, but on the other hand, I'm, I'm kind of dismayed at seeing some of the crop of new, I say kids, but people coming out who like went all tech and they don't, 
they, they get out into the real world and they're not able to articulate or communicate um, from a human perspective. Like they love this thing that they've built and it's their baby, but they don't, you know, it's like, look at my thing and buy it because you can look at my research. And it's like, they're not really um, doing themselves a service. So I always recommend to people look at um, philosophy and humanities and branch out. I mean, I have done a little bit of everything and it, it all helps. Yeah, I agree with you and that's really validating to hear actually because I, I have a similar background in the humanities and in linguistics and um, I know a lot of schools have cut their humanities departments. So to hear from someone who is in a successful cybersecurity like career that you value those those backgrounds those perspectives is a really important thing to be communicating out there one of the things that i that i try to coach my clients and the some of the students that i'm mentoring um is like first first off the top there are really only three reasons that someone would would communicate right it's emotion logic and credibility so it's the heart the head and the gut and so many people are so focused on the logic but they have to love you and they have to trust you. And that's not me, that's a guy named Aristotle, right? So I've kind of positioned what, I, what I've done and I've actually productized, I've taken 25 years of Joel's brain and Joel's working with clients methodology and turned it into a card, I say game, but it's really a, a workshop that I do. And I'm, I've, I've shown it to people here. I'm teaching a workshop at DEF CON on Friday Amazing. on being a nerd that talks good. And it all boils down to like emotion, logic, credibility, yeah. and then how do you pull together the elements that are necessary to, to have a balanced message. And, yeah. and it's something that's sort of been like, it's been here and in here and in here for like 10 years and it's just, it's sort of come out. So that's, that's, that's what I'm excited about. And every, I, it's funny because I show up at, at booths and, and I, I like to listen to people's stories and they say, what do you do? And I pull out one of my decks of cards and all of a sudden their booth becomes my booth. Badass. Yeah, and, and actually um, Akamai let me do a booth takeover earlier and it was really cool to see my logo up there. It was, it's just, it's been so good. Do you think one day you'll have your own booth? Um, I don't know. So it's funny, uh, I would rather help other companies communicate. I mean, obviously I'm extroverted and I like to communicate, but last year when I was with a marketing agency, um, people would ask me, oh, do you have a booth here? And I would say, I have 12, yeah. 12, 12 clients that I'm supporting. So, and I like, I like seeing people excel. And one of my favorite things in my model is, um, and I won't like kind of all go into it, but you get these technical founders or these product teams that are just like, oh, marketing is, marketing is just fluffy stuff and I'm gonna leave that to the creative people and I don't really care about the top level big idea. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. So what would you change about your industry? Oh, blah, 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 blah. And they, get, they emote and you can see it comes out and I'm like, good, let's write that down. Yeah. You know, or uh, um, if, if your company was a, was a movie franchise, what's the genre? Oh, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, if you can get those conversations going, and that's what my model does, it's just a bunch of prompts that get things out of your head. And when you can see that technical person that, that 20 minutes earlier was like yawning and poo-pooing it, and they start lighting up, then you know you have a really authentic message that's gonna resonate for the audience that they're going after because they want to talk to people like them. Of course, so true. So when that doesn't happen, like what's what's missing? Like when you see, uh, you know, a lot of sort of like overused terms on a lot of different booths, but you, you like, how do you get to the story when you're when you're traveling around Black Hat? So I, it, one of my other side projects that I'm working on, and I don't talk about it a lot, it's a, a periodic table of cybersecurity tropes and cliches. And we all, we've all seen them. Like you can look around and it's like, we do X so you can Y, um, secure what matters, which my company was doing in 2015, or my favorite is blank at the speed of blank. And it's like, there's, a, there's an intent and there's a thought and I know what you're going for, yeah. but you're so close to it yourself that if, you, if that's the best you can do, you need to, you need to take a step back and you yeah. need to ask yourself like, and I'm a words guy, but it's not what are the words, it's like what's, this, what's the clarity and the intent? Yeah. And that goes back to Aristotle too. He talked about the essence. 
Um, I, I have a, a, a great friend on LinkedIn. He's a product marketing guy. Hey, Zach. And uh, we were having lunch the other day, and he goes, "I'm trying. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get this wrong." But the Aristotle quote is, "The essence is the thing that makes the thing be the thing." It's not the thing itself, right? And so, so many people get wrapped around the axle about what word are we going to use, or you know, what's the hot message that we're going to use this quarter? And it's like you've got to have that first principles intent, like. What do you want to say? We can worry about what it looks like later. Right. Let's just focus on the, the, the purity and clarity of thought. Yeah. And then, so I call that clarity. And then we focus it and apply it to the audience or the medium or the campaign. And that can change. And so some people are super duper rigid and some people are like incredibly loose and you have to kind of find something in the middle. It's fascinating and I, I, it's a really refreshing take um, a lot of, you know, sort of marketing conversations that I have, they might, even if they do start at an essence level, they end up being about word count. And we miss a lot of that in between. And on a, on a practical level, I get it, right? Because you, you do have a word count or a character count for the sign that you're putting up or that kind of thing. But there's a lot of in between that you, um, it seems like you're really unpacking with people. Yeah. And, and you can do too little. You, you, you're saying nothing. Yeah. Or you can overwhelm. Yeah. And so that's one of the other things that I, I work with my clients is understanding client overwhelm. And so you may be a PhD talking to another PhD, but that doesn't mean you need to be talking on PhD level, right? Because we're all humans and you know we have a, a, a fight or flight um, filtering mechanism. And if, if you overwhelm me and make me think too much, I will start dropping packets and I will start ignoring bits yeah. of information. So you have to be really selective about what do you keep in yeah. and how do you present it? Yeah. What is one thing, because on the Black Hat floor, there's a huge variety of people. There are non-technical people, there are marketers, there are people who are models, there are CISOs, it's a huge variety. And it makes me think about who actually we are at sort of collectively appealing to or speaking to, and it's just people overall, right? It's a huge, huge group. But what is something that you wish that a, that a non-technical group of people knew about this industry? Could be, could be a habit, could be uh, a term, could be a concept, but what's something that you like, wish you could communicate to a greater group of people? You know, for the non-technical person, yeah. I think I would... I think I would want them to know that we are all really just trying the best that we can. Yeah. Um, and sometimes we get a little bit of overbearing with maybe our tech speak or, or you know, we, we overwhelm. Um, we get a little condescending sometimes, right? And, uh, but we're really, I, I really truly believe that the, the large majority of people in our community are really just trying to do the best that we can. Um, but we, we do kind of set up an adversarial relationship with the consumers of our industry, yeah. right? For the longest time, I mean, I was, I was in the government and I was a policy guy and we were the no police. Yeah. And now we're starting to see a shift to the yes, but, which is, which is really good. Um, but I'm, I'm seeing even a little bit more on enablement and, uh, you know, the, the how abouts. And it's like when, when we can really understand and not everybody needs to understand the mindset of the of the cfo yeah. but you've got to have somebody that um that advocates for them because you can't expect your board or your your executive leadership as much as we want them to be to understand and be a SME. that's not our job right okay. i'm not a i i, I used to say i'm not a uh, a city planner but i know enough about traffic flow that at least in the united states when i step off a curve i look left and that is like a habit that I don't under I don't know why and I don't understand you know city planning but as a consumer of the city plan yes. I know that much right. and we rely on people to understand the why and not just the uh, what's in it for them yeah. um, and again it just it's that overwhelm but I love it, we have such an open community for the most part and it's you know back to the diversity thing it's getting better. We're recognizing that people don't all think the same way. And it's like really, it's really cool to see, you know, us being a little bit more open in some places, not, not as many as others. 
Um, but it's again, people just people were just trying our best, um, and we don't always get it right. And that's the other thing. I wish we as a community would be better at is this hero complex. So I really try to caution my clients not to be, we are the best, not to be, um, we are the hero because your customers or your audience, they are the hero of their own story and you can't play hero. You can play the Obi-Wan, you can play the Dumbledore, you can play the guide um, that empowers them. So I talk about like, what's a superpower? Name the superpower that you give your customer so they can win the day. And when you make them win the day, they will love you and trust you. And it, it, all, it all goes back to that. Yeah. Uh, this is a rogue question that I have not prepared you for, but what's your favorite book? Oh, man. So I, I don't read as much as I used to. Um, but one of my... One of my <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to say it. I think Neuromancer by William Gibson right painted a picture of, uh, of a world that we're only stepping into right now. He's one, of, he's one of my favorite authors. I got to meet him several years ago. And I asked him, I said, Is there ever, has there ever been anything that you've predicted that you said, oh, dear God, I hope this doesn't come true. And he goes, I'm not responsible for what people do with the ideas that I put out there. Oh, God. Right? I'm like, yeah, it was a very intense answer. But he was like, he was like, you know, he goes, I just, I see where we are and I draw a line and I just keep drawing it further than anybody else. And so when you've got that type of vision and foresight, which we claim sometimes to be, see around the corner was the big cliche that my company was doing and predictive analytics and 2015, you know, but we're not really, you know, we're, 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 we're not thinking as far ahead as we could about um, the stuff that we're building and the ramifications. And I'm not even getting in, that's not even an AI thing, but it's just, we don't always see from a, maybe, maybe we need to fictionalize a little bit and we need to do that, that uh, imagination, get out of our heads and, and sort of draw that line a little bit further. And I think, I think William Gibson uh, still is, is putting out some amazing stuff. It's not as good as it used to be, but you know, he's competing with a lot. Yeah. Uh, this is also a rogue question that we're just gonna, okay, yeah, okay, love it. Um, as someone who clearly loves words, loves language, loves communication, what is your hot take on generative AI and how it's kind of being used now, but also kind of how it's just like entered the general pop, you know, sort of like population so suddenly? So uh, my, at the last agency I was at, um, I, was, I was head of content and I was looking into um, how do we use these tools? And I think they're very good for beating the blank page. Like there's, when you're a writer, there's nothing worse than that, that I have to start and I've got nothing. So it's very good at, um, it's, it's good at structure and technical things, yeah. but it's not very good about the, the human emotion. And I don't think it ever will be, yeah. um, but I think that, that we can use it. And, and it's, I'm not a fan of the, uh, you know, AI is gonna replace you, yeah. um, because I don't think it can. Yeah. A, and, but I do think that, it, that it's gonna be a, um, a force multiplier. But my concern is, and, and I did a, a presentation with the Mozilla Foundation using my messaging um, framework on how can we how can we use this to combat the the um, generative AI misinformation? And I said the biggest problem is not misinformation is not like a new thing. It's been around since like um, you know the the, the um, French Revolution and, and things like that. But what's different is the scale and the um, the ability to fool somebody who is lulled into a false sense of security. So if we're not paying attention, we're gonna get we're gonna get just the we're, the the zone is gonna be flooded. If you see my my reference of just just nonsense, but that gives us an opportunity as communicators and humans to rise above and to do better. And I think again that just gets back to if we really can remember the human element. It, the, the, the AI stuff can't do that. And so we're able to, uh, um, we're able to rise above basically. It's a really encouraging answer. I, I've had some 
conversations that end up feeling a little bleak, especially for folks who are in content or content creators or artists, that kind of stuff. So that was a really positive, positive spin on that. Well, I, I definitely believe that like chat GPT and a lot of these popular tools, yeah. this is not the implementation that, that we're going to be stuck with. This is like, this is like, um, Apple Watch version two that w it, it didn't do anything right. but tell the time and give you text messages. But over time, we figured out how to use it. Yeah. Um, and I and I do think that I, I had one client once um, say we we got ChatGPT to write us a mission statement. See if you can do better. And I said pass. I said if you think that that mission statement, which sounds like everything else. Um, I mean, it, it, it's it's the the generative AI we have right now is the is the equivalent of internet pink slime. Do you remember the pink slime chicken McNuggets? Sure do. That is what we have. It is it is literally the lowest common denominator prepackaged, and you know it's useful as a tool, but it can't be. You you never let that be. Um, you can never let it go out the door without human hands, as basically. Chicken nuggets and hot dogs are both very tasty, but they are not the most creative element of cuisine that's available. Yeah, I mean, if you've had a good hot dog, you've had a good hot dog, but if you've had a really good bratwurst, you know. That's a different story. There's some, there's some craftsmanship that goes yeah. into a good sausage and a hot dog ain't it. I love it. Thanks for running with the metaphor. That was great. Um, any other hot takes you want to drop on the podcast? I, I don't think I think I've dropped enough. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm pro I'm probably not going to get any any uh, client engagements out of this because I probably <laughs> pissed off a lot of people. However, if you if you like what I'm talking about and you're like, yeah, we really we really could do better, you know, I've got a I've got a a, a positive message, which is like you can. And there's a lot of people who think, you know, well, you're either a great communicator or you're not, and I don't I don't believe that, you know. So I, you know, basically I, like I said, I'm a nerd that talks good and I help other nerds talk gooder. I love it. Um, where can people find you? So the, the official website address is messagespecs.com, but you can also find me at nerdthattalksgood.com. It's, it's a redirect. Um, and I just launched uh, the message deck, which is literally, again, 25 years of Joel's brain as a workshop that you can do yourself or you can give me a call. I'm doing... Uh, free 45 minute messaging workshops, just as discovery, just like, look, how do you need help? Because I'm all about giving and it's much to my, uh, um, my partner's chagrin. She's like, stop giving stuff away for free. And I'm like, that's what our community really, when it comes down to it is about, is like helping people and it'll come back. So please come back to me. <laughs> and thank you so much for, for giving so me much. your time. I really appreciate it. Um, I think you can also probably connect with Joel on LinkedIn. You can also find me on LinkedIn. Um, and thank you so much for your time. Enjoy the rest of Black Hat. This has been a blast. Agreed. Me too. We'll see you in cyberspace, y'all.